in September 2018, the studio and gallery hosted an exhibition of paintings by Maria Spadoni, curated by her daughter, Liana Marletta. In her late twenties, Maria Spadoni came from Italy to Greenock in Scotland to marry into an Italian Scottish family. As she was turning 50, she began to draw and paint, something she had long desired. She regarded her paintings as poems, and later, towards the end of her life, she focused mainly on writing poetry. Her daughter, Liana Marletta, explains this. Maria said that first and foremost she was a poet. She wrote many, many poems as well as her paintings. And um, I once said to her, your poems are very like your paintings. And she said, don't you know, um, my, poem, my paintings are poems. And first and foremost, I'm a poet and that's how I approach painting. So in many ways, um, that is the approach to take with her work, which seems quite um, intriguing and playful and open-ended, um, that it's open to, to many interpretations. And in one level you could say that this is almost like the archetypal mother painting, mother and daughter, mother and child painting, and it's the bond, and yet the, the, the child is, is, is growing and, and wants to move away, and so it's the sort of trying to let go in, in tug of war of letting go and, and, and holding on. On another level, it could be um, the same person who is splicing and is going into another direction. And to me, it's almost a portrait also of my mother exploring herself as an artist. So she comes from a sort of sorrowful state that that um, in many ways it inspired her painting and there is this emergence of, 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 of many parts of her other self, her um, creative self. And it's interesting that the breasts of, um, are apples. It's an emblem that is very recurring in my mother's paintings, the apple. And one way you could think about it is, is the apple in the Garden of Eden. She actually has a painting that looks like a scene from the Garden of Eden. And the apple, of course, is knowledge. It's also the ma materialisation on this planet that you create something, you give a material form to it. And um, so the breasts, instead of nurturing, have, are the apples of, of knowledge and creativity. Um, Another recurring motif in Mother's paintings is the sun and the moon, and in here we look, uh, it looks like the sun. Again, the sun, she connected it to, um, to power and to energy. She spoke very much about releasing her spirit, and she didn't mean the spirit of, of the other world, she meant the spirit very much of this life, the, the, the sort of the elan, the fire, the energy um, in, in your being to, to create and to express yourself. Um, so there are quite a few elements in here that do recur in, in other paintings that um, it's almost like an auteur <laughs> sort of um, approach. Maria was a self-taught artist. She dabbled with evening school classes and technique for a little while, but felt that finding her own style and expression was essential to her journey and exploration as an artist-poet. Her approach to painting was to start a journey with the brush in her hand, not knowing where that journey would take her. She painted obsessively at night time, sometimes with a celebratory glass of red wine in hand. Maria first exhibited some of her early work in the Maclean Museum and Art Gallery in Greenock. An encounter in 1982 with the artist and sculptor George Wiley was a pivotal moment in Maria's life. George and Daphne Wiley gave Maria her first one-woman show at the Greenock Arts Guild in 1983. George wrote then, 
Maria is a free spirit. She draws well on her own imagination, her personality, and freely expresses herself. George and Daphne Wiley remained lifelong supporters and friends. My mother donated this painting to the late George Wiley, who became a very good um, long life friend of my mother, both Daphne, his wife, and George. And when George first met my mother, um, he was fascinated by her art and called her a true free spirit. And even though she did not need the outside endorsement of her art because it was just something that she had to do um, to connect with another local artist who himself was self-taught to a large extent and um, made her feel that, um, that there was you know, people that she could relate to and that in endorsed her and gave her even more sort of fuel to, to fire her head. Um, so she donated this painting to George as a thank you because George and Daphne gave her her first solo show at, at the, um, the Green and Carts Guild and she called it Autumn Gold and the, this figure in many ways um, is the way that I look at it. She, she was doing a series of paintings um, one was called Crippled Spirit. It was about spirits being crippled, and so it was this process of fi finding herself as an artist to unleash her spirit. And if you look at the neck here, it's almost like a crutch that's holding the head, uh, the sort of moon-shaped head. And some people have said when they look at that face, it does, it does look like my mother, again, a sort of self-portrait, but it's very much the moon motif coming out again. Um, there are images pre-Christian um, sculptures that are similar to the space um, that my mother grew up with and in which she said, you know, in her subconscious, they came out in her paintings many decades later. But then the painting itself, I think, was painted in autumn, which called Autumn Gold, with the theme of apples again, again, the theme of apples being the abundance of the earth and um, knowledge, creation, and there's a juggling act there, so there's the idea um, of, of creation being a sort of juggling act, a playful act, and a sort of poetic version probably of, of the rainbow. Um, so it's kind of the elements of, of the earth and the planet that give life, give light, um, give creation. It's interesting that, and this appears in a few other paintings, that, some, that she paints the fingernails of some of the characters and it, was, it just really struck me actually that in a way that's the metaphor of the artist because she has paint in her fingers and it's interesting that the one with the apples is the one that has more paint in the fingers. There's also um, in some of the paintings bruises um, that, that come up such as in the knee here almost blood. There's another painting where there's a bruise in the knee and um, Again, it's the sort of journey of um, her as, as being a bruised person that is finding um, art has a way to, to, to find wholeness, um, as it were. The, the po she also wrote a poem to George Wiley that praised his energy, his creativity, his open-mindedness. She really um, revered open-minded people because she herself was very open-minded. Some people may have said she was eccentric, but she felt that the freedom of the mind was the most important thing um, to, to hang on to and to unleash. Some people have been tempted to view Maria's work as outsider art. This is obviously a misleading label, as even in the 1980s, she was clearly an insider, being exhibited in a number of group shows at the Inverclyde Biennial Exhibitions and at a second major solo show at the Dundee Repertory Theatre. She became known to Richard DeMarco and George Melly and must have been exposed to the work of many artists being exhibited in Scotland at that time. Much of her work is figurative and expressionistic, but she did add some abstract forms to some of her paintings. 
She also liked to paint flowers and animals. She rarely gave titles to her paintings, perhaps not wanting to shape the viewer's reading of her work. Towards the end of her life, she died in March 2014, Maria grew depressed about leaving her paintings behind. She said she regretted she had not found them new homes. She particularly wanted her paintings to be part of public collections in the museums and galleries she enjoyed visiting. In 2019, this was partly realised when the Royal Glasgow Institute of Fine Arts held an exhibition of her work in the Kelly Gallery. This painting my mother called Changing Faces, um, which it literally is <laughs> someone getting their faces changed and transplanted. Um, again, it's an open-ended poetic painting with um, which anyone can read their own meaning into and your meaning can change from day to day. Um, my own interpretation of it and also knowing that what when my mother spoke about it is, is the idea I feel that again that this could be the artist um, who is changing what sort of sort of more kind of sorrowful or mundane face for a kind of more exotic mischievous subversive face of the artist or, or the creator who wants to actually liberate herself. She did speak about her paintings um, being a form of liberation. She started to paint as she was approaching her 50s. Most of her life she, she felt she'd been whilst happy in, in a sort of controlled environment where she, she, was, she was a housewife and mother. She enjoyed her role but she felt that her own inner spirit and her own inner energy and needed to, to come out and, and be expressed and she had plenty of it. So you could read this that um, this is the artist um, changing changing um, her approach to life and being more liberated, uh, more independent. And um, there is a st strange sort of mask there that's almost like an Italian mask, um, theatrical mask, it's maybe like a cat. And there are quite, there's quite a lot of animal imagery in my mother's paintings, and so I think that um, animal imagery have their own themes and symbols. She, she did like animals, and she grew up in a farm, so she was very close to animals. Um, but the animals, she, she had, she dreamt, um, she, she really tuned into her dreams, and she said she often dreamt of cats, and that she had an Italian book, and she looked up that the meaning of cats could be an act of treachery. Um, here the act of treachery could be that she's no longer going to fit into a role um, of a subs uh, submissive housewife and that she's going to um, be true to herself, but it may mean being treacherous to, to, to other people who've depended on her. Again, um, the, the recurring motif of, of the moon, um, and it could be the sun there too, but there's, there's a moon, and the, she was obsessed with the moon. Um, okay, she wasn't scientifically into astrology, but in a metaphorical way she was, but she said she was conceiving, which was ruled by the moon. The moon also is, is the goddess of female deity, and she came from part of Italy where there had been um, a pagan, pre-Christian um, worship of the moon goddess, and she said through her subconscious you know, that the moon did appear in any of her paintings, but also she painted at night time by the light of the moon, and she said she would go out and get the energy and the light from the moon to go into her paintings. But the moon's also about illusion and this face changing, um, you know, where things are, aren't fixed. So the moon itself is a face and it, it plays with the idea of changing, changing faces.